chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And the Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Sidon two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went. And came in to an harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. And he was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. For they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. Say amen as you be seen. I want to count on my message today. Saved by a threat. Saved by a threat. Now, when and most often probably 90% of the time when you hear, amen, the name Rahab mentioned, it's generally and most often always in association Amen to what she was. And she was in her past an harlot. Amen. A prostitute, what she would be called today. Amen. And generally, for some reason, and I'll explain why I think that it is, when she spoke of hundreds of years down on in the course of time by writers, they still referred to her as Rahab. Or the harlot Rahab. And she has borne that title all down through the corridors of time. Amen. And some may think that is somewhat disparaging. Amen. To this woman. Amen. But that is actually not the case. She is referred to that and she carries that title. Amen. For one reason. And that is, amen, not to degrade her. Amen. But to show God's mercy and God's grace. How many knows he's a merciful God today? Amen. How many knows that his grace, amen, is sufficient? I don't care, amen, how bad you've been. I don't care how bad you are. Amen. The grace of Almighty God, amen, is greater. Amen. He is able to wash you and make you whiter than snow. Amen. But she carries that title, amen, that we that hear of her, when it is preached to us of her life, how that the grace of God saved her. And I'm going to tell you something. We in this house, amen, are no different than she was. Amen. Absolutely not for it. The Bible says we are all sinners. Amen. And those that are in saved condition, we are saved by grace. And there's no little sin and big sin. You see, she was no different, amen, than anybody else, amen, in her past life. Amen. But it just shows us, amen, of the greatness and the mercies of God. I don't know about you, amen, but I'm so thankful today, amen, for His mercy and for His grace because we was all on that downward road, amen, to the devil's hell and somewhere in our life, amen, He spoke out to us, amen, the spirit of conviction came upon us and we answered the call. Now, I don't want my title text to be misleading when I title this message, Saved by Thread. And we all imagine a thread, amen, is just a real small piece of string that actually holds or has no strength about it. You can't pull anything with a thread. Amen. There's no power there. So don't, amen, be, amen, confused with my title thinking that Rahab, because of 
of her past was barely saved. Because that's not the case. In fact, Rahab, amen, is as great as any other of the women of the Bible. She absolutely was. Now watch this. The Bible says, back in verse 1 of Joshua chapter 2, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shidon to men to spy secretly. And we know what this was all about. Joshua and the children of Israel had just crossed over Jordan into the promised land to conquer it and to take it, a land that flowed with milk and honey, a spiritual type of heaven. And when they got over there, amen, they discovered these nations, seven in particular, that they were going to have to conquer. And one of the greatest cities of Canaan was this city, Jericho. It was a double-walled city. And when those gates of that city closed by night, no one came in or no one came out. And the walls of that city were so thick that people actually built houses up on top of the walls and lived there. Rahab, a man was there, and she had a business upon the wall, a house of prostitution. And the Bible says that Joshua selected him to spies, and I want you to go in, amen, to this city. I want to know, and I paraphrase, I want to know maybe how thick the walls are, how many walls there actually are. I want to know about the people there. Are they fortified? Are they men of war? Just go see what's in the city of Jericho and bring back to me, because we're going to take that city. And the Bible said, he said, go view the land, even Jericho, and they went. And came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now, you might be wondering, well, why in the world would these godly men go into Jericho and go to Rahab's house? And what they were doing they was trying to be unnoticed, and they knew that the business that she ran, men frequented that house often. They would come and go, come and go. Men would continually come and go, and they hoped that they would be unnoticed, that they would just regular men out for a good time, and they would go there and they would just kind of blend into the crowd. But word, somebody saw that. Word got back to the king. Oh, king, there's men come from Israel, and they have come in to spy out our city. And the Bible says, a man that he sent, a man men to Rahab's house inquiring of her, and paraphrase said, look, we know these men have come into your house. Now, turn them over to us. And she looks at those that came and said, wait a minute, it's true, they were here, but they're not here now. And she told him, she said, now, the, the, the gates of the city is about to close, for they closed at dark. So no one could come in and out at all. And she told them, said, now if you move quickly, you may catch them before they get out of the city. And they left Rahab's house and they went looking for those spies. But Rahab sent them on a diversion. She protected those men. And what's this? This woman. Number one was a Canaanite, a mortal enemy to the children of Israel. Number two, as I've already stated, she was a prostitute running that type of business. Yet somewhere inside her was faith. I'm telling you here, that's what God 
he's looking for. Those spies did not, by coincidence, go into Rahab's house. You see, we've got to look farther down in God's spiritual plan than just what me said. Why were those men directed or felt led to go into Rahab's house? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it was God's ordained divine plan that they go the why? Because God was looking for somebody. God was looking for something. Joshua wanted to know how fortified the city was. But God was looking for somebody in that city that would, amen, serve a purpose in bringing about and preserving the seed of the Messiah. It was greater than Joshua's battle. It was greater than the spies. It was God's plan from the Garden of Eden to bring forth the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and he was looking, no matter where he had to look, for somebody that would say, yes, Lord, here am I, send me. How I many glad? How I many glad you lifted up your hand one day and said, here am I, Lord, send me. My neighbor may not want to go. My brother may not want to go. My daddy may not want to go. My mama may not want to go. But here am I, Lord, send me. That's why you young ones got to stand strong. Mama may not go with you. Daddy may not go with you. Brother may not go with you. Even your spouse may not go with you. But we still need to hold our hand up high and say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. God was looking for one specific person. And it was a heart. Think about that. You see, God, the Bible says, ponders the heart. While everybody else, and maybe even the writer James and the writer Paul, both in which they refer to her as a heart, God looked beyond her sin, and God looked into her heart. And when he did, he saw something in Rahab that he didn't see in a lot of Jewish women. Yes, he did. He saw, he saw something there. And watch this. Amen. She sent the king's men on the way. And the Bible said in chapter 2, verse 9 through 15, watch this, what she does afterward. And she said unto the men, see, she, she took them up on the roof, and she covered them with spots of flax. And they were hid on the roof, under the flax, until those men that sought them left. And when they left, she went up, and she wanted to have a conversation with them. There was something burning down inside her. You see, I don't care what kind of sin a one may be. I don't care what they're hooked on. When the power and the conviction of God gets a hold of a heart, they're going to feel something right here. That's why you often see Send them in and send the women coming to the house of the Lord, and they'll cry the whole time they go. I preached for these 40 plus years, and I preached my heart out, and I've looked back and literally see tears streaming down men and women's faces, only to watch them to get up and go out. And you've heard me say this probably a dozen times, but I'll never forget. I think it was on that homecoming service that we had. I said, right here, right here in this very spot, Preaching, hell is hot. Amen. And heaven is sweet. And look back at a man sitting up the third row up and tears just streaming down. I just knew that it was going to come to the altar. And man, I just man, I just laid it on the line. Man, you gotta get right with God. He's calling, he's calling in his hour. You need to make your way to an altar. Only to see him get up after the preaching. Walk out the door. If I'm not mistaken, the next time, well, it wasn't the next time, but the next time I saw him, he was dead in his grave. 
to live a time like today in the streets of Virginia. Amen. But I want to tell you something. The conviction of God is real. And when one feels that conviction and that drawing power of the Holy Ghost, they better heed the call. Rahab felt something. She felt something like she never felt in her business or in Jericho before. And she ran upstairs to the roof. And she said unto me, I know that the Lord has given you the land. How did she know that? She heard the call. They was talking about, hey, these people that just crossed Jordan, they're not like any other people. Amen. They serve a God that is alive. Their God literally parted the Red Sea for them when they was coming out of Egypt. Their God parted Jordan, and they walked across into our land. You better fear the Lord. I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us. People better fear the Lord. It's real. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Watch this. For we have heard how the Lord brought up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the flood, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. This woman was in fear of being destroyed. I'm telling you that God is a destroyer. And at the conclusion of the story of Jericho, you know it as well as I do, the walls fell down flat. She didn't want to be a part of that. She feared God. And more important than that, she believed God. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more carry to any man because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Man, that's what God wants to hear. Even in this day. You see, that's why us apostolic people are special people. There is one God, apostolic tongue, talking, holy, rolling, born again, believers, in the power of Jesus' name. We are a special people because we are the bride of Jesus Christ, and we know the truth of God's Word, that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Amen. One God who's above all, through all, and in you all. The very thing... That Rahab was acknowledging, believing that the God of Israel was God not only in heaven, but it's God in earth. Ain't you glad you know who Jesus is? Woo! Glory to God. I've been preaching on the Godhead about three messages. Who the Father is, who the Son is, and who the Holy Ghost is. Then I got a lot of views on who the Holy Ghost is. You see, don't they? You know, you you don't hear a lot about him, and all you hear about him mainly about Trinitarian Jesus is he's number three. Well, who in the world wants anything to do with number three? Even Roger knows number two's first loser. Try to tell me all the time when I come in second. The man I come in second place is just first loser. Well, I'm telling you right now, Amen. <laughs> Jesus is not in the Godhead, amen, but the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in him, amen. He is the Father, he is the Son, and he is the Holy Ghost, all wrapped up in one. Rahab, she was on fire in the spirit. She said, now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shoot you, Thomas. Look here, fellas. I could have said yes, they up on top of my roof. And they would have came up and apprehended you. Oh, that's not what you did. She feared God more than she did the king. And I'll tell you right now, you better fear God in this hour more than you fear the government, Democrats, or Republicans. 
Uh, I'm telling you right now, I don't care who they elect in 2022, 2024, they ain't going to be able to help you. They ain't going to want help for mankind, and his name is Jesus. She said, now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shewed you kindness, that ye will also shew kindness unto my Father's house. See, she just didn't want herself saved. She wanted the daddy saved. She wanted the mommy saved. She wanted all of the kids saved. She wanted the grandkids saved. She wanted everybody that was attached to her by blood to be saved. And that's the attitude that we should. She said, that ye will also shew kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And that ye will save. Oh, this is all about salvation and Christ. She wanted saved from the destruction of Jericho that she believed with all five of her being that was coming. Now I'm telling you, sitting here lost today, you need to be saved from the eternal flames of hell. And that you were saved alive, my father, my mother, my brethren, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. Ooh, that's a pretty big request, right? I mean, a lot of us ask God for things from time to time, but we very so ask for mommy. And mommy wants this, and daddy wants that. I got a brother, he wants this over here, and a sister, he wants that over there. You see, you can tell the day she had a good heart about it. She, most, most people say, man, save me, save me. Mom and dad's on their own, wrestling. But not her. She had a good heart about it. Now, we don't know the circumstances that brought her into that profession of running a house of ill repute. We don't know that she was there. Amen. And she carried that title. Amen. Down to the corridors of time. And the men answered her, Our life for yours. See, salvation's a two way street. See, they preach in denomination that you don't have to do nothing to be saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart. Some say, even confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you say, That's not true. Prayer can't save you. Prayer alone can't save you. <laughs> Watch this. And the men answered her, our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. See, that's something people got to do. I mean, he didn't just say, well, we're leaving out tonight. Pack your stuff and leave with us. It wasn't that simple, no. She had something to do. And we'll find out in just a minute what she had to do in order to be saved. And I'm telling you here today that anyone that is saved in this church dispensation of time, there's something you got to do. It takes more than faith. For my Bible says faith without works is dead. See, Rahab believed. Oh, that wasn't good enough. No, sir. She believed all she heard. She believed God parted the Red Sea. She believed God parted Jordan. She believed they'd come across with the Ark of the Covenant. That wasn't good enough. The Bible says then, she led them down by cord through the wind. For her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. Verse 16. And she said unto them, Get you to the mouth. Now, she's given them instruction. She was familiar with the layout of the land. She was familiar with the landscape. She was familiar with Jericho, the city. She knew things. And she said, I'm going to get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourself there three days. 
until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. Verse 17. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us work. And watch what the Bible says in verse 18. Rahab's faith alone did not serve her. Behold, when we come into the land, you've got to stay here, Rahab. You've got to stay right here in Jericho until the time is right, until all things are ready, and we are prepared to take this city. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread. And there's a message there. That scarlet thread going with my title, Saved by Thread, that scarlet collar represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was going to be shed some 2,500 years later on Calvary's hill for the salvation of mankind. Here is a typology of salvation in the Old Testament that would be brought to pass in the New. Behold, we come into the land. Thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread. When I say she was saved, by a thread, she was saved, not by a rope, but by the blood of Jesus. The same blood that Jesus shed on Calvary was going to be the same blood that would save her, not from Jericho, but eternally. And that's what it's all about. We are to be saved eternally. When death comes upon us, we want our hearts be made right with God. Behold, when we come into this land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou hast let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father the mercy of God, the grace of God. Thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, thy brethren, and all thy father's household home in the ground. You think about that. And what we have here. We have Rahab who heard the words of God, irregardless of where she heard it from, of his terror, of his judgment, and no doubt of his mercy and grace. And she believed it. She got a hold of that with her spirit, and she believed it, and she risked her own life at the hands of the Canaanite people for the people of God. I'm going to tell you something. This living a Christian life will cost you everything that the world can offer. And until you are able to give up everything that the world got to offer that's not like God, you'll never be saved. You'll never be a Christian. You'll never be in the church of the living God. Rahab was willing to lay down You've got to lay down your own life. Not naturally, but your lifestyle that you love so well, that has you so bound. You've got to be willing to lay that down, and until you do, you'll never be a Christian. You'll never be a child of God. And you'll never be saved. Rahab, Rahab, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to protect you if the king's men come into my house and cut my throat. I've done my part. I'm going to acknowledge now not the gods of the Canaanites, but the one true God of Israel. That's what Rahab thought in her heart. Rahab wasn't just saved by a thread, barely that she was one of the greatest women of faith that you read about in the entire Bible. And she done it with both faith and works. That's it. The Bible says in James 2 and 25 and 26, Likewise also was Rahab, what's it? 
about this is 20 some hundred years later, he's talking about Rahab, and he still calls her a harlot. She's already been saved and in heaven. So don't worry about when they call you names. <laughs> I've been called everything but a good man and dad. A lot of different people. That's all right. It's all right. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? What was her works? She hung out that. Scarlet thread over the wall. She hid the spies under the flax. She cared. She lied to her own people. She was a Canaanite, a prostitute, and a liar. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. She was a Canaanite, a prostitute, and a liar. But she has something. God saw something in her that he didn't see in anybody else in Canaan, and a lot of people in Israel. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, James said, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You can believe all you want. And there are religions and denominations whose principles are the foundation of their doctrines. It's just belief. Just belief. I always like to quote that country where the devils believe in one God and devils and they're not saved. Was the body without the spirit of death so faith without works is dead also? James referred to Paul in Hebrews 11 31. By faith, the heart, there you go. By faith, the heart, it's all right. Man, he had a lot to talk about, didn't he? Huh? Why that bum? Come on. He used to be a bum. Anointed man of God by the name of Stephen, as they stoned him to death, those who stoned him laid their coats or clothes and saw a Tarsus feet that was Paul. And he consented to his death. And then he calls Rahab a harlot. Well, he's a murderer. That's what he was. You see? I don't care how bad your past is. That was Paul's past. This was Rahab's past. God don't care how bad your past is. All I'm saying he's concerned about is your future. And how you live for him. And how you love him. And how you submit yourself to every ordinance of God. By faith, the heart of Rahab perished not. But I'm going to tell you now, Paul nor James is referring to her by those titles. To degrade her. They both well know. James would say, Listen, God saved this woman from her situation. Paul would say, Look, man, by faith, this woman, irregardless of the lifestyle she lived, her faith with her works delivered her. By faith, the Holy Spirit had perished not with them that believed not, which she had received the spies with peace. As it seemed to be. Saved by a thread, the scarlet thread, the blood of Jesus. And listen to me. As I begin to study, what become of Rahab? I mean, you know the rest of the Jericho story. Spies went back. Told Joshua, said, now listen, Joshua, and I'm paraphrasing. Now, there's this lady that lives on the wall in Jericho. Said, she helped us. She hid us. And she gave us direction out of the city. And we told her, 
our lives for hers. Now, we got we got to stand up to our bargain. Is she still up for hers? See, if you'll stand up for yours, God will stand up for this. Now, we got to do something for her. We told her that when we come into the city, if she ain't got this guard a thread out the window, we won't touch that house to destroy it. God should have said, good deal. Good deal. They went in. I don't want to go into all that preaching. We'll be here another hour and a half. <laughs> You'll learn how to preach a year. I sure as that devil is not. Getting old, got to be my wind for going in. But Ray had, she extended that thread out the window. And the troops that Joshua marched around the city for seven days. Seven times on the seventh day, and then he told the thirteenth, and the walls fell flat, all but the house of Rahab, and she was safe. They took her back. Now, Rahab, I don't suppose she was married. If she was, she'd have to use Jericho. We should go out in Israel. She married a man by the name of Solomon. Well, me and I, you don't hear much about Simon, but you know, you know about Simon. But we do. Simon, she married. And the purpose of God selecting her, God was preserving a seed or the seed of the Messiah. Rahab became the great, great grandmother. King David. This harlot living in that sin filled city of Jericho because she believed God and because she obeyed the instructions given to her by the spies and extended them help in the scarlet thread, God brought her into his own men. Salmon, I believe, begat Boaz, who married Ruth. Rahab was every bit as great as Ruth. Ruth got away with a Moabite woman. They begat Obed. Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David. You see, it don't matter how bad you've been. It's the decisions that you make from this day forward that God's interested in. If you're lost, you don't have to be lost. But I'll tell you what you have to do. You have to be exactly like Rahab. Hear, believe, and act upon your faith. And God will save you. We thank you for the Holy Ghost tonight. Today, what you tell me, God, if you use the Holy Ghost, you pray that get around these altars and pray with them. That God is in the Holy Ghost. Know that I'm not worthy to call upon your name.